They split us up. Mm -hmm. So on to splitting us up and um, having, I'm sorry guys, there's just a lot, a lot of people being near my parents right now and I don't want them to be near them. They're vaccinated as well, but you know, with the whole thing going on, I don't know why they're so fucking close. Pan the camera to them. Pan the camera to her. This is the person that we're talking about. We're, we're in public, folks. Hey guys, Alden Rio here with my wife, El Rio. Hi guys, it's El. Hi folks, we hope you're doing well um, as we get near the end of this pandemic. Uh, today's video, we just wanted to talk about some stuff that's not really uh, paranormal self-defense related or spirit keeping defense. We want to talk about um, issues that we're all facing today. We want to talk about the COVID vaccination, actually. We went ahead and we decided that it was a good idea for us. Before COVID hit, we, we were doing a lot of in-person business. Um, and uh, being a Reiki practitioner, I was actually working with a lot of people in their homes, at work and things, and even doing emergency Reiki treatments at people's jobs when they would come out Crisis for lunch and yeah. stuff like that. So we couldn't do any of that during the pandemic. Literally, guys, our car folds out to be a bench for our clients in order for us to do Reiki treatments for them. Right. So that's why when we actually do travel, when you guys do book investigations and Reiki healing, if you guys aren't comfortable or not vaccinated, we actually have a command center, which is our mobile command center. And we usually do a lot of stuff on the go, like he said, in the offices. So think of it as like a, a, a um, delivery truck of Reiki. Yes, yes. I mean, this is great for folks who who are really, really stressed. Maybe you're up for some uh, presentation that you need to get done and you needed to see us for 30 minutes to an hour before that presentation. Guys, this will keep your mind uh, clear. It'll help you deal with anxiety and you can be the best person you can be when delivering that presentation so i would say like it'll be like spiritual beta blockers in the way for you guys which you, sometimes you guys might need Couldn't in order for myself. you to function in a meeting or functioning with with a client or whatever it is sometimes we're dysfunctional which is really really normal and in reiki it's i want to tell you this too and in spiritual life coaching it's okay to be dysfunctional it's okay to have um negative entities it's just you crisis managing and kind of um, self-management with your um, keeping us, of course, like with energies too. Um, however, now we're talking about like the COVID vaccines and things and I'm gonna just segue it into the vaccine. Um, we are vaccinated. By the way, guys. Yes, we went ahead and we, we, we actually got the Johnson & Johnson one-shot vaccine. Uh, turns out that was what was available at the mass vaccination site that we decided to pick that was about an hour to two hours outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, what we're finding is that if you go to the more rural areas, uh, you are finding that there's more uh, vaccination shots available. So that's a, that's a quick tip for folks who have the means to travel away from any big cities that you may live in, around, or near and go out to some of the real areas, you'll be able to get your vaccine if that's uh, if that's a choice that you want to make. I'm um, sweating a storm, guys. Sorry, we're in direct sunlight right now. All right, so I mean, we definitely wanted to tell you guys about our vaccination experience. Um, we signed up on the same day to kind of pre-register, right? Like like our particular area, we have a there's like a pre-registration thing, and I signed up earlier in the day. My wife signed up earlier uh, in the evening, and for some reason, they sent me a text message telling me to come out to the uh, rural location and, and, and get the vaccine. And they never said anything to her. So we just drove up, we went ahead, took the hour drive, drove up to this rural area. And we were surprised, this was on a Friday actually, and there was no one in line. Literally, there was no one in line on the outside, but they had all of these right. ropes and everything ready to receive these people. Um, and this was actually a, a location where they had just opened it up to 16 and older on Tuesday of that week. So. Um, the stories that came out of there on Tuesday was pretty bad. Like they said that people waited five, six, seven, eight hours on Tuesday and then were told later on that there were no vaccinations available. So um, just know that including if Including walk-ins too. So no walk-ins and no um, pre-registered as well. So people had to come back the next day. They split us up. Mm -hmm. So on to splitting us up and um, having, 
I'm sorry guys, there's just a lot, a lot of people being near my parents right now and I don't want them to be near them. They're vaccinated as well, but, you know, with the whole thing going on, I don't know why they're so fucking close. Behind the camera to them. Behind the camera to her. This is the person that we're talking about. We're, we're in public, folks, so you have no expectation of privacy in public. Just, just a quick tip for you folks who are skittish on YouTube about... Uh, putting people up on YouTube if we, if you're in a public space and this is good for all 50 states um, If you're in a public public place, there's no expectation of privacy so long as you're not slandering anyone So long as you're not saying hey, this person's a bad person anything crazy like that You can put you can post people face on YouTube where you get in trouble is if the person is naked inside of their home And you're recording the outside of their home This is why Google has those blurry images on people's windows because some lady exposed herself <laughs> Yeah, some some lady exposed herself um, and w was able to sue Google uh, successfully years ago because the idea is that she's within the bounds of her home. So if she exposed herself even in an open window or a window with the uh, curtains open, that was her expectation of privacy inside the bounds of her home. Parks, you don't get an expectation of privacy. This is why you have cameras on ATMs, this is why you have cameras on the front of stores that show the parking lot. Right. These are things that, that are important to remember for people who are gonna be in a YouTube verse. I digress back to the point of the video, folks. Um, uh, so, right, so we split up and um, I had to use, I had to show this little QR code. It was very, very well organized. I, I showed the QR code that to a gentleman. The dog ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, sh oh my I showed a QR code to a gentleman that was, I assume was a, um, a National Guardsman because there were many of them there and one note that one thing I want to note about their mannerisms They were very nice almost eerily nice like mm -hmm. almost like they themselves were on beta blockers or something like they didn't really have a care in the world There was all yes, sir. No, sir kind of uh, kind of um, Kind of speech and uh, again. I showed them my QR code. They verified who I was with my ID um, and quick thing folks if you have a different uh, address than what's on your ID. They're going to have to uh, actually have you just spell it out and verify what your actual mailing address is. Um, I showed my QR code to, to two more people and eventually they sat me at a seat uh, that in a room full of different areas where people were administering the vaccine. Interesting thing is that each seat had two person, two people there, two personnel people there. So one person administers a shot and then another person actually asks you several questions. Now, my wife has a different set of circumstances and a whole different set of questions that they asked her. Um, but they tell you that, hey, you're going to get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine uh, for our location. They asked me uh, whether whether I had had any kind of allergic reactions. And then once I got the shot, which took five minutes, like it didn't take long at all, they uh, had me sit in the area and told me to self-time myself for 15 minutes mm -hmm. to see if I had any reactions. Now, the funny thing is that exact week that we got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, there were news stories about people who have fainted in North Carolina and I believe right. Texas. So in those individual uh, states that has shut down the individual locations where the people had fainted just to find out what was going on. So when we got our vaccine, they had us sitting in chairs. I'm assuming that's because they were trying to make sure people didn't faint. So key, key fact, folks, if you're going to get this vaccine, whether it's Johnson Johnson, Pfizer or Moderna, eat something with sweets in it. You don't yeah. want to be fainting um, when you get there. I sat for my 15 minutes. I had no problems. I took pictures of my uh, my vaccine card. I won't be showing you the vaccine card because they told us on social media it's a good idea to not show it because people have been stealing um, people's identities and things. So I won't show you the card, but rest assured, we we have our Johnson Johnson vaccine in a few days we'll be fully, fully vaccinated. Um, so for... <clears throat> From my experience um, with with it, it's totally different than yours. And you were even surprised when I came back out because he finished before I did, and he was waiting there. So it was in due time. But um, other people were saying that they waited, like what Alden was saying, two hours to going on to like eight hours. I know it's a steep jump, but for me, when I was in there, they told me to separate, be separate from my husband, so I had to sit um, outside still um, in. The chairs and whatnot and I was the first one in the chair however there were more people in front of me beyond the door right so beyond the door um, there was like eight people in front of me I counted eight and um, they were waiting and I saw like a makeshift marquee kind of sign thing that says an hour and 30 minute wait for eight people 
and I was looking at like the uh, the vaccine like tables like there's plenty of room to like screen them and whatnot and one gentleman was like I am a correctional officer um, do I get any special like yes sir you can come online um, in front of line so for me how I went there was um, I'm clergy and I'm an ordained minister and I have a religious entity and they told me to prove it by the way they didn't tell the other guy to prove it they told me to prove it because they didn't believe that I was in that so I showed them my emails I showed them my business my LLC and everything else and they took it they they they, they, they took me in and what was the most discouraging thing is that I had to leave other older folks behind too however with this like in order for me to heal I have to get vaccinated in order for us to do Reiki um, healing and for me to be doing my face-to-face -face life coaching with people who are in the DC area metropolitan area so um, I got the vaccine they asked me a lot of questions and a lot of like rude questions too um, if you guys don't know this I am Asian and I've been getting a lot of Asian hate towards me uh, ever since I was growing up actually and Aldrin can tell you a handful of times too more than a handful of times of when there was injustice with um, other minorities or, or just with just other people in general because of my race you know making fun of my eyes and making fun of you know the the the, the China virus and things of that nature and I'm not even Chinese and so personally what I found it, found it to be is usually women of a certain age and you can tell that these women have been through something. They've been through something and they feel like they need to push the Agenda. hurts, the yeah. hurt that they felt on other people. Right. That, and folks, if you um, if you are Asian, you, you probably know what I'm talking about. Like, put it down below if you know what I'm talking about, um, about that. Because it, seem, it seems like they feel like they need to write the universe and how dare you as an Asian person be... Get in all of yeah. these different stereotypes. So I need to do something to you to prevent you from having any kind of success. And sometimes it can come down to just getting food. We were uh, we were shopping in, in, in Ikea one day and we had someone of a certain age. Ikea guys, Ikea where everyone's welcomed. Of a where certain everyone age, everyone yes. is welcomed. And she acted as if she didn't even see my wife. I kid you not, she acted as if I ordered my food and she just looked at my wife and then said next. She literally said next. So this, and this this was before COVID, folks. This was about two to three years before COVID. So COVID is, has only right. compacted this. But I digress. I'll let you get. But not only that, too. I'm not just an Asian woman. I'm a trans Asian woman too. So people react differently. Yes. Um, they react to different social. For me, it's not necessary. I mean, it is racism and it is xenophobia, but also it's classism too. When you kind of mix it. But anyways, going. I digress. We're gonna talk about that in a later um, vlog. But for this vlog, we're just gonna talk about our experience with um, the COVID. So when I went in there, they asked um, if I had any AIDS, HIV, very, very loudly, by the way. Of course I don't. And they asked it very loud. And not they didn't ask any other, uh, other people that. Not only that, how do you know what I am? Maybe my presence says that I'm trans um, or, or things of that nature, but there's selected people that were there to really help and there's selected people there who are on on transit to the the vaccination table itself um nice woman um army in army fatigued um was asking me questions and i can see from the corner that someone was like listening and shaking their head or whatever and it's like why are you shaking your head and it's not even a person in uniform it well, was one of the workers well we should say we should tell them that when you when it came a chance to select like the sex you did put in there uh, not wanna, specified yeah when you do that i feel like you become a part of an even smaller minority so now you're on this list and i almost feel like right. depending on who you're dealing with it might be the shit list depending on, on who you're dealing with it seems like they were like oh who is this person who's not going to tell us everything yeah. Bad enough that I'm already Asian too, in some people's eyes. What's worse is that I'm not specified. And what what kills them inside is I'm gonna I'm gonna be this because I'm a spiritual life coach. What kills them inside is that why, where did it come from, how are they getting this access right now, and why do I have to help them? Those are the main questions that they ask. And these main questions can sometimes relate to just bigotry. And with bigotry comes. Um, fronting and we, we have like code names with that fronting is like you know asking questions it could be a good way of asking questions it could be a bad way of asking questions but these kind of questions are to my Asian folks out there or whoever is a minority um, 
Her English is so well. I did not know you can eat chicken like that. Like that's the whole thing that we that we experience as an interracial. Oh yes, we went to Nando's. Go talk. Tell them about that account. I have this thing where if I'm in public, I don't really like eating chicken with my hands. I prefer to like break it down and, and basically debone it basically um, using just a fork. So the guy was like amazed that I was able to like not touch the chicken once and to get every scrap of bone off of it. Like little things like that. Like when you assume that, oh, where you come from or your culture is so much more superior and oh, how amazed that this person can do that to that level. It, it's bigotry, folks. It's bigotry. They didn't know I could speak English um, on there. I had a U.S. passport, by the way, as my ID. <laughs> um, they didn't know I could speak English. Um, but it's okay to kind of, I don't want to say it's okay to judge people, but um, I excuse it if it's subliminal and if it's like, oh, you surprised me. I didn't know that you can speak that kind of language in Chang. That's different than, oh, Mr. Mr. Aldwin, I didn't know that you can speak English. You know, it's just something like that. But um, when people, okay, so on, on en route to the, the vaccination table, there was two ladies there. One was um, a registered nurse and one was a registered nurse that was administrating, administering the vaccine. And, you know, they're asking me to, oh, by the way, they asked me to verify my last name more than eight times. They asked me to spell it because they think that I'm not the person who was on there. Not only that, they couldn't comprehend when I was trying to spell my last name to them. They're like, oh, this person is true because although um, they don't know how to pronounce it sometimes, Rio can be Rex, Rex, and people don't know how to, which is, which is fine. But, you know, me spelling Rio, they're like, you can't be a Rio. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I can be, and I am a Rio. So, you know, turds to you. And it was, it was just, it was just very, very, um, to me it was very quick, but to me it was very stressful. So leading on to, um, that she was, she's talking to me, um, and they're asking like these questions, like, do I travel? It's like, yes, I do travel. And it's like, oh, so what made you want to get the shot? The other person with a, with a accent was trying to um, put the shot in me. It's like, oh. Um, to different places. I travel all halfway around the world. I, I, I do a lot of gigs. I do a lot of life coaching and I'm a mentor. I'm a businesswoman. Um, and she's a businesswoman? Yes, I'm a businesswoman. I didn't have to ask her. No one asked me what I was doing. They're just nosy. It's not, it's, no it's, one, it's not medical questions. They're just nosy. No one, when I had my turn, again, folks, remember we were separated. So no one asked me any of those things. Like no one asked me why I was getting it. No one asked me about a business. Uh, it was none of that. In fact, the person who actually injected the uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine in my arm didn't ask me much of anything. I mean, I think the only thing he said to me oh, was, yeah. can you roll up your sleeve? Mm. That was it. Getting the vaccine coming out, waiting in the waiting in the table, in, in the chairs. I was surprised about the chairs, actually, because when I because he had a different vantage point. When I turned, I, that's when I saw the chairs. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shoot, it looks like... I felt like I was like being like screamed and like about to like be put in a cell or something like that or be put in like a, 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 a space pod or something. I, that's where my mind goes. And it felt like they were like uh, interviewing us like we're replicants in, um, in um, Total Recall well, or something. Well, we should say that this is not this. This was not an outside vaccination area. Mm -hmm. I, I know in many parts of the country they have these outdoor vaccination sites this was inside of an old furniture store actually that that that, that, that they big, had that, that, one, yeah i mean yeah. the furniture store I, I'm, I'm assuming went out of business due to covid and everything was bright everything was clean in there the floors were clean the air smelled fresh there wasn't any stale air smell anything like, like that but the entire show floor area was filled with seats and uh that they, they, they had designators like b1 through b20 and that's where you go to sit down to have them administer right. your shot and then also have someone who actually hand writes by the way they hand write your name onto your onto your covid vaccination, vaccination card. card okay so sitting down you didn't get experience with people asking questions did not you? not much more than are you is this your name uh, are you a junior I think she wanted to make sure because I am a junior. She wanted to make sure that that, that that the name was in there correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So when we're sitting for our 15 minutes rebuttal, it's not rebuttal, like our 15 minutes um, after vaccination thing, um, people kept on coming to me, and I realized that I was the only Asian person in that in that sector in a way, right? So they kept on asking me questions. Do I go to 
uh, China? Do I go to Asia a lot? I was like, I've never been to China before actually. <laughs> but I'm not Chinese, just letting you guys know. And asking me these like um, honest questions, to be honest, really honest questions, because they were just scared and uneducated people. And then when they knew that I knew how to speak and knew how to conversate, they felt a little bit more open. And I want to say this too, especially to the Asian community, I know that we're all, a lot of the older um, Asian folks are a little bit closed-minded and they're trying to be a little bit more open-minded, but Asian folks, like, I'm gonna tell you this, guys, especially the Asian community, uh, there is, there's different um, gossip and, and drama YouTube YouTubers that actually talk about this. I'll link to you guys one YouTube video on that, but there is racism in the Asian community when it comes to other minorities, and, and just, it's just really, um, it's really horrible because, like, if you just conversate, if if, if if I don't, if you, we don't know each other, mm -hmm. and somehow you think that I'm gonna be racist to you, but until I open my mouth, you're gonna know that I'm cool with you. You know, it's just all like sudden judgments and things of that nature, but continue. Frank Wu is president of Queens College in New York. He's a scholar of Asian American studies. It's a moral dilemma. Are you going to declare that you're a person of color, or do you aspire to be an honorary white? Or do you just get excluded as a perpetual foreigner, right? Those are the those options. Those are not good that, options at right? all. Right, yes. Yeah, none of those is good. Wu says part of that forced identity is shaped by the idea of the model minority, a belief that Asian Americans are more successful than other minorities because of hard work. It's false flattery. It's not even really a compliment of Asian Americans. It's just a way to denigrate other people of color, of saying, look at the Asians. They made it. Why can't you? What you're I'm just gonna say it's just it's just it's just old. It's just it, to me it all stems from the old chains of colonialism and uh, and, and colorism, right? So uh, there's many different types of Asians, just like there's many different types of Africans and many types and many different types of people who are brown skin and things. And it basically the brighter you are, the lighter you are. The idea is that the more educated you likely are the less of a threat you are. So all of these things are ingrained in all of the minorities based off, off of colonialism and colorism. And that's kind of what we're, that's kind of what we're talking about. When I was there afterwards, I felt I felt better. I felt I felt good because I saw my husband, but I saw him from a distance. I felt like I was like, like he was like so far away because he's my husband. I, I never get separated from my husband, but in this case we had to. Um, we walked out and I realized that this Johnson & Johnson could be a really, um, powerful vaccine because when we were heading out a woman was eating a banana and she looked so vacant like i'm talking about vacant as something that's like struck her with the uh with the vaccine one the second thing too guys is when we came back now we're gonna talk about the effects okay so the effects of um the the thing the reason why I didn't go to work was because I felt very, very weak. So to all my pathfinders, you guys already got an email or a text message. I felt very, very weak. Not like COVID weak or anything like that, or maybe it is because I'm, I'm getting a dose of it, but I started to um, have back pain. Um, I had headaches. I had to take ibuprofen. If that didn't work, I had to take Tylenol. And it's just training our body to to um take this vaccine and johnson and johnson's one shot um trick kind of um a vaccine so it's 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 pretty effective however you can feel the effects when it's being injected like from from less than 14 hours i felt the effects and i could not go to work i could not work i couldn't talk on the phone and especially for the vaccine i couldn't do um my arm this arm still is a little bit fatigued from the shot so if you guys get the vaccine, know that you guys might have a sense of like lumber, lumber arms, like like something that is like very, very bruised and like fenced or for you people that are bruised too, just make sure that you tell a healthcare provider that you know, you're bruising so then they can help you. And it's probably a good idea mm -hmm. to, to uh, when you get this shot, choose, if you're a person who sleeps on your arm, like sleeps on, sleeps on your side, folks, I can't tell you enough, mm -hmm. you might want to get it on the opposite arm because the first night for me, 
I got the hot, I got the fever kind of situation where I was hot and cold, hot and cold. I would have to turn on the ceiling fan and I was still hot and cold, hot and cold. I had to move the uh, covers to kind of cover just my lower body. And then even last night, which is now over 48 hours after getting the vaccination, right. I'm, I'm sweating more. Um, I'm finding that uh, even just last night I woke up and I was like surrounded by sweat in the bed. I had to move to the lower end, which is which puts me right underneath the fan. So the idea that they say that these side effects of the vaccine is good because that shows that your immune system is ramping up and you're ready to deal with the uh, virus should it infect you. Right. Um, for me, a TMI, but there was times where I surprised um, Papa um, Aldwin because I usually don't really, for my undergarments of a cami and stuff like that, I just went to Mando because it was just so hot. I, it was so, so hot. The ceiling fan was on, the AC was on, and yet everyone's still hot. So um, everyone is experiencing this. Um, you know, it's it's nothing that it's like, like COVID or anything like that, but we experience this type of um, reaction towards the vaccine, which is, a, which, which is, which is, which is really, really um, normal for, for a lot of people. I always want to say this too. A lot of times people are a little bit um, afraid of, of, of being vaxxed and having a vaccine. Uh, but I'm going to tell you this, it's, it's really beneficial. It's really beneficial for us to get a vaccine so that we can do everyday mundane things. Um, you guys have to go out and, and, and eat, uh, go to the grocery store. There's some restaurants and some event venues and establishments that you have to actually have a, um, a COVID card, a, a COVID vaccine card that in and, order to enter. That and some of the countries have been talking a lot about having a COVID vaccine. Um, and the good thing about your cards here in, in the United States, even though they're handwritten, there is a database, I'm certain, where the CDC knows who was vaccinated and how long it's been since you should have your full uh, immunity. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm assuming if the Biden administration ever gets around to um, allowing a COVID vaccine uh, passport or to have it be integrated with the passport system, you'll kind of have that available. So the idea is that hold on to that card um, and whenever they make it, they can add it to add it to your passport i mean passports are already kind of expensive in the states i think they run about 300 bucks right Yo. so i don't know yeah. how much more that's going to add to it i don't plus know plus the photos yeah plus the appointment fees so it's already it's <laughs> already a mess but then to add the covid thing to it i understand this this is a this is a this is a pandemic so you do, you know they're going to probably uh, re require it eventually i know there's a number of countries and even these uh these cruise ships that are actually asking for your covid cards proof of vaccination uh proof of having a a covid free test before you aboard the ship before you board some of these planes and before you enter some of these countries so if you're going to be a traveler just likely you're going to need the vaccine at some point folks so guys i just wanted to go over a couple things and recap uh, just to make sure you understand a few things if you're going to get this vaccine whether it's the moderna whether it's the uh, uh, Pfizer vaccine, whether it's the Johnson & Johnson, there's a couple of things I want you to know in conclusion. Number one is that the, the efficacy rate, a lot of people are saying the efficacy rate of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine isn't high enough and they are preferring the uh, Pfizer, they're, they're preferring the uh, uh, Moderna over the Johnson & Johnson. What I'll say folks is that whatever vaccine that they offer you, just go ahead and get whatever they offer you because in the coming weeks, it's going to probably be hotter and hotter as they open it up to more people, 16 and sometimes even younger right now. I think Pfizer is getting emergency uh, qualification to allow this to go to people under 12. So, folks, you need to get it now if you don't want to be if you want to actually be able to be able to travel safely uh, during the summer months. But So I wouldn't focus in on the efficacy numbers. That's just a point estimate. And if you look at those numbers and the statistics, they're not, it's not statistically different from the other numbers from the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. And also remember that we're comparing apples and oranges because these vaccines were studied at different time periods in different populations, in different geographic locations with different circulating strains. And so therefore you can't really compare the two. All the vaccines, all three vaccines are highly effective and I would have no qualms about taking any one of them. I don't have a preference for any of the vaccines. And the CDC specifically has said they don't have any preference for any of the vaccines. I want you to understand that the efficacy rate of the Johnson & Johnson, they say is 60 something percent. Well, guys, you should know that that data, you should know that that data was actually taken 
when Pfizer was actually testing when the virus wasn't at the same levels. And we also didn't have other mutant strands in this country. So in actuality, the Johnson and Johnson was tested more rigorously, right? It was tested against at least three different mutant strands of COVID and it was tested amongst a higher infected population, which is what drove that 60, which drove that number down from 90 down to like 65. So don't, don't feel like, oh, I'm getting the weaker one or something like that. You're getting one that was tested more thoroughly, more rigorously. And this is the reason why it has a lower efficacy rate. All three vaccines will keep you out of the hospital. All three vaccines will keep you from dying. I will say that if you don't remember anything from this, this video, if you're gonna get the vaccines, you wanna buy some Advil and you're gonna wanna buy some Tylenol, I would recommend a Tylenol extra strength, folks. Um, again, we're not doctors, we're just telling you from our personal uh, standpoint of what got us through it. Um, and a lot of people on YouTube are saying the same thing. Advil will help keep your fever down and the Tylenol will help you with the body aches because your headache will be terrible if you happen if you end up with those side effects and your body aches will be horrible. These are the same symptoms that happen when you have COVID. So those things will get you through COVID if you had it, folks. See you in the next video, folks. Please be safe, wash your hands, wear a mask, blessed be.